Hello friends and uh, welcome back to Ghoul's Night In. Uh, this is a cozy podcast where we talk about all things spooky with your best ghoul friends. I'm Penny Snark. And I'm Midge Munster. What are we talking about today, Mitch? Well, uh, it is the season, as the kids would say, and I wanted to chat a bit about Halloween decor hunting because that is one of my absolute favorite activities. I think I maybe like the the hunt almost as good as the Halloween. <laughs> It's true. I mean, Halloween is only one day, but you can hunt for decor for months. I think that's what I've been loving the last three or four years is like that it's giving, especially now that stores are putting things out earlier and earlier. Um, Well, not the last two years because of shipping and things, but, you know, it got to the point where I was buying things on like June 8th. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like Halloween, because I hate summer. I hate summer. Can I say it? Can I say that? Yeah, I feel that. Don't come for me. Um, I, I just don't like it one bit, especially we both live in the Midwest. It's hot. It's humid. It's not just hot. It's so sticky. sticky. And like, look at this beautiful hair. Look at this hair and tell me how I'm supposed to upkeep this level of Gorgina in this humidity. So I hate summer. Can't happen. Unpossible. (laughs) Unpossible. Unpossible. Um, so I, I think that decor hunting has given me something to look forward to, to get me through the summer into the fall. For and sure. that's, uh, I, I just love it. So I want to talk a bit today about, you know, what we're seeing, trends we're seeing this year, um, weird trends we're seeing this year, <laughs> any stories that we have about items, the one that got away. I feel like everybody's got something that they still to this day regret not buying. Um, your favorite piece you own, what your decor style is, just all that. That's what we're going to be covering today. A little bit of all the goodness that is decorating for Halloween. I feel that. I'm ready. I'm in. (laughs) I'm all in. I'm convinced. You convinced (laughs) me. I've sold it. Let's talk about (laughs) Halloween decor. So uh, I guess what I would start with, have you been out decor hunting this year? I have. Um, I... I feel like my area is a little bit behind um, some of the others. I've definitely seen um, yourself and other Halloween hunters finding a lot more, um, but we are just just this past week, um, I've started seeing more Halloween out in Home Goods and TJ Maxx and places like that. You had mentioned that your area, like people don't uh, freak out about like Ray Dunn and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and so you go to your home goods and it's like, yeah, stopped. I always, I feel, I feel bad because I am not a Ray Dunn fan. Um, yeah. They just don't speak to me. But then I see all of these items that I know that people are going crazy trying yeah. to find. And obviously I guess maybe Milwaukee just isn't a, a Ray Dunn city yeah. because it's, I always see even some of the like, I think rarer like, pieces are still just hanging around. I think it's very, um, I, mean, I think it's probably a Southern thing really yeah. where it's really popular because I mean, I'm more South. I mean, I'm still Midwest, but I'm more, I'm Missouri's more, the culture is more Southern there. Yeah. Um, and I think it's very much that farmhouse, like people who are more in the Southern states like that kind of clean, you know, just very simple stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Bray Dunn goes like that where I'm at. Um, but that brings me to another topic of decor hunting. Scalpers this uh, year are wild. Oh my gosh. The worst. I've never seen it at all. Like, I mean, it, it's happened, but never like this year. And I don't know why that is. I know. It seems like, obviously, I'm very used to scalpers with, like, concert tickets. Right. Events, things like that. But it seems like it's just gotten so wild with yeah. decor items and, like, those darn Starbucks cups. Oh, my god. That gosh. everyone is desperate yes. for. And it's, it's just crazy. And, I mean, one, it's leaking into things that I never expected. I mean, some of these, like, pieces from Michael's or like the the stackable mugs from at home this year and the cauldron pieces I'm seeing those and the bath and body oh the yeah bath the and bath body. and body works you are just you are out of luck with oh that. my gosh I mean just absolutely insane and I don't know if maybe it's because I mean part of it I always feel like a little to blame because you know like spooky content creators have made it apparent and like clear to people that there are this, there's a group of people that are nuts about Halloween and will pay the price. Um, But it's just wild to me that some of these things, and I'm seeing them for like $200, $300. 
It's like, dude, we, we made a monster. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And that's one of those things that um, you might have this to talk about later, because I know that you agree since we've talked about this offline. But it just, it seems such a shame um, for people to just spend crazy amounts of money on these like big box pieces when you could buy something from an independent maker. Yes. Um, there, are st there are like, obviously I also get the excitement of really wanting one of those pieces from Bath and Body Works or Michaels or anywhere. Um, but like, there are so many other options when you're looking yeah. for Halloween decor and like, it always stinks to not get exactly the thing that you're dreaming of. But you could also get something that's a lot more unique that you don't see on everybody else's page, yeah. which is kind of fun. And like, if you don't buy from a scalper, just don't do it. Don't like do they're it. gonna, they are not gonna stop until they get stuck with hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of inventory that they can't sell, and then hopefully that will end the cycle. But just a whole house full of witch hand <laughs> hands for the holders. <laughs> Their countertop is just like just <laughs> everything they own sitting on a witch hand pedestal. <laughs> Toilet paper in their bathroom. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hate to see it. And I hate to see, you know, just two things to what you were saying. I hate to see people who want or genuinely love Halloween not be able to get things that mm -hmm. they want to decorate their homes. But I also hate that. And I've made a, a big point of this on my YouTube channel several times. Like, there are so many spooky small shops that are giving us Halloween 24-7 yes. all year round. And I think we've actually talked about, we'd love to do a, an episode where we just talk about our, our favorite spooky yeah. small businesses. Because uh, it, it does always make me a little like, to see them get lost in the mix of the big box mania yeah. during this time. Um, so go, go support a small creator, but also decor hunt because it's fun. <laughs> Do you ever have the experience where you feel like you've been, I don't know, hypnotized into liking something because yes. you've seen how sought after it that is? That Cracker Barrel ghost this year was that for me. <laughs> yeah. I I was, uh, yeah, absolutely. Seeing uh, the, the Instagram hype of something yeah. or like the way, a lot of times it has nothing to do with the item. It has to do with the way someone has styled something yes. because they are a talented aesthetics person. Um, yeah, that Cracker Barrel goes for me this year. I saw so many people posting that and I was like, that's really cool. And then I actually got the opportunity to like see it and like I had the chance to buy it. And I was like, wait, I don't want that. <laughs> Especially not for $65. Right. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I definitely feel that. And like I can fall into that trap when I'm at a home goods and I see something and I'm like, who? People yeah. want this. It's good. And then I like hold it in my hands and I'm like, do you actually like this? Or do you just it's like that FOMO? And it's the FOMO. And I'm also like, I'm very much a collector personality. So like Niffler. I am a, I am a, I'm a Niffler for sure. Halloween Niffler goes <laughs> scuttling through things, tuck all the shinies away. And so I like to have things and like yeah. just collect things. So I see it and I'm like, this is important. I need to, I need to collect it. Well, but then the, the, panic almost that's been created it's like well if i don't buy this right now I will, i'll never see it again yeah. and then i won't have the option to buy it and so i think a lot of us are making these impulse purchases of things we don't really want and then it's like oh you get it home and you don't really have anywhere to put it or yeah. like <laughs> that being said do you have regrets do you what a, do you have an item in your <sighs> mind that was something that you to this day are like i should have bought that man um I have I have been lucky in finding some of the pieces that I really wanted. Um, like, I don't know if this is a, a controversial opinion or not, but I've become less and less impressed with Target Halloween. Oh no, that's over that's the same. years. Um, I think a lot of people feel yeah, that way. It's so a lot more cartoony and family friendly, which yeah. is fine. And and that's probably their honestly their target market, which is totally fine. But for us, like. Elder Goths, it's not really the, the vibe. Yeah, I'm like, I just want to have the option. Like, it's fine to have mm -hmm. all the cartoony stuff, but I want to have just some normal. Well, like that John Darian line they released at the, yes, at the end of last was year. So I was like, this is what I wanted. Actually, I was, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No. Nope. Well, uh, somebody the other night in a, a live I was in mentioned they would love to see Target collab with Christine McConnell. Oh, and I, I love said, that. I would simply pass away. I would flat out die get take yes. all my money my life savings <laughs> sell my house 
for sure. Uh, but I have um, one of the like original like Ouija board trays oh, that Target made the with good like one before cool they snakes did on it. Purple leaves. Yes. So I'm that that was one that I like. I didn't see it in my store for most of the season and thought that I wasn't going to be able to get it. Um, and then the other thing, obviously, surprise, these are all Ouija themed things. Um, <laughs> last year, the big thing that I wanted was the Ouija cheese board and cookie jar pairing that people were finding at Home Goods. And I went a bunch and didn't see it. And then kind so of on like different than the yeah. Ouija board cheese tray and cookie jar you have no oh, these ones so like the last it. time i went oh okay. i saw them and i was like oh i gotta have these <laughs> but yeah there are i'm trying to think of specific things that i wanted but i didn't get i feel like a lot of the time it's things that i want but can't reasonably get so like, like I a big I, thing that... yeah so i live in a one bedroom apartment sure. um i don't have outdoor space no, so there's no 12 foot skeleton no no so like i would love a 12 foot skeleton i sure. would love like i i do really like some of like the big like spooky bed and breakfast like wooden signs that home goods does so that's my item that's, that's my that's my one that got away uh, there was a Sleepy Hollow one two years ago that, and some of peop, some people have seen it out this year. But I'm noticing it's mostly at the, um, you know, on the north, is that the northeast? Yeah, how they have they also have home sense there. Uh, yep. So I'm noticing it's mostly people who have a home sense. Um, they have it, but I have not seen it anywhere since two years ago. And at the time, I was living in a one bedroom apartment, yeah. and it, it was a one of those motel type signs that said like sleepy hollow dead and breakfast and it had the horseman rearing back with the pumpkin and i to this day i'm so mad at myself and if i recall the first time i saw it it was 79 dollars, and i thought like woof wow we now those are 130 yeah they're 129.99 if you find them and which you know inflation whatever but so now even if I do find it, I'm going to pay double what I would have paid yeah. if I had just bought it the first time. And I'm so mad. <laughs> know, it's so hard to you know have stuff. I think the the other thing is that, like, I am always on the lookout for Joanna Parker yeah. designs. And a lot of those, I think, go, like, directly to TJX stores yeah. from the manufacturer. And I have never found them in stores. So I do have a set of mugs and I have treat bowls that I got on Zulily. But I, like, I see other people finding I have found her stuff at Ross I multiple times. I've found mugs and uh, towel sets and floor mats and things of hers at, at Ross specifically. Ross Dress for Less. Dress for Less. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think for me this year, the, like, one that got away is going to be those uh, Joanne jack-o'-lantern cookie jars oh uh, yeah i really want them and i can't find them anywhere and uh and oh um michael's the bride of frankenstein bust have you seen this oh yes i have i think that's gonna be i'm hoping uh, those are my wish lists my that's a that hot tips with midge when you go decor hunting have a wish list of that's things smart. you want because otherwise it's very easy to like buy anything you find because it's like dopamine, right? Yeah. Instant dopamine to to go into a store and see it stocked with Halloween and you want everything. Um, so yeah, make a list of the things you absolutely have to have and then try not to venture too far off of it. Um, but yeah, the pumpkins and the, the Bride of Frankenstein head are the two things this year that I went in knowing that I, I was like, I, I have to have these if I can find them. No luck yet. No. But I did go into Michael's on Sunday and I happened to get there while they were unboxing. Like oh, they, they, there the was, best. So I, it was this like, because I hadn't been decor hunting in a couple weeks. And it was this instant wash of like, oh, thank God I didn't miss it. Like, you know? <laughs> um, but they put out everything that they had and some cool stuff. There's actually a planchette thing I think you would Ooh. really like. It's like a, just a little tabletop wood sign, but it's really, really beautiful. Um, I'll pop a picture if I can find it, but. Um, the, the, they really only had some of the similar stuff to that pastel line last yeah. year, the skeletons and the roses and the snakes, which is really, it's actually quite cool. There, Michaels is doing a lot more, like I said, people who decorate spooky year round, yes. it, it's going to be a lot more, I think, um, not 
Halloween specific, which is cool. Yeah. I do really appreciate that Michael's, especially in like the past couple of years, has done a really wide variety yeah. of things where they have the super traditional Halloween, but then they also have the some of the pastel stuff. And then this year they have some of that more like cottage core, like nature witch. Yeah. Vibe. I I think uh and we'll get into that too, uh some of the trends I'm seeing that are very I feel like very inspired by like millennial and Gen Z culture yes. and TikTok and things like you're, we're seeing a lot of that pop up. Um, but yeah, they, the, um, the woman at Michael said they're experiencing also experiencing crazy shipping delays yeah. and that most of their stuff, they, they don't have it in their stores yet. Um, so we might not be seeing Halloween in some places till like September, which, you know, really is a fine amount of time, but we've been spoiled <laughs> i know just, the thing that i just worry about is that they always put christmas up so early that i'm afraid that they won't give like a full amount of time to halloween sure. even though it's coming later they'll, so like, instead of saying it. they'll pull it early so i i hope that doesn't happen because i do want to i always think it's everything. funny that like we're always like our community is always like oh you're putting out christmas this early but then we're like halloween in june da, 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 da. <laughs> As long as you have the um, shelf space, I would be happy. Like, feel free to keep Halloween and Christmas all, all, all year, year round. Let me shop for like, Halloween whenever that's the hell fine. I feel like it. I Michael. just don't <laughs> want to, to move through my yeah. thing. But I mean, I guess maybe people who like really love the Fourth of July are like, "What is this all this Halloween? I need you to find me on my holiday." Tag a friend. <laughs> who do you know that loves the Fourth of July? Because that and loves decorating. That's the, the real thing of decorating. July. Like who? <laughs> America! <laughs> That's, I... Mm -mm, nope. <laughs> that ain't for me. Uh, so, yeah, trends. 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 Trend alert. Uh, <laughs> trend hot. Hot guys. Spell the tea, he says. Boots the house down. Um, cottage core. So much. Yeah, so much cottage core. And I think the um, kind of popularization and uh, of modern witchcraft, like... Mm -hmm. the, uh, many more. I read a, a study recently about that something like 26% of millennial slash Gen Z aged people now identify as witches. Wow. I'm not surprised. Which is really, really interesting. Um, and it was talking about kind of the, this mass rejection of their beliefs that they were raised with and things. It's, it's very fascinating to see how things turn like that. Um, but yeah, I'm seeing so much witch decor this year that isn't like the green hag witch. It's like actual, like apothecary, yeah. you know, very like an actual witch cottage type. Uh, and I love it. I love yeah. to see it. That is a, that's a trend I'm excited about. Yeah. I think that's very cool. I mean, we have to talk about one of the, most controversial trends of the past few years, the yoga skeleton. The yoga skeleton. <laughs> yeah, this one's for you, Miranda. <laughs> uh, if you don't follow our friend Miranda from Spooky Little Halloween blog, definitely give her a check out because she's awesome. And uh, she, that is her biggest pet peeve. And she will, people tag her in every Instagram story, every post where they find yoga skeletons. They've really... They've gone for it this year. They have. <laughs> I've seen there more. Are so many yoga skeletons. I I don't super get it. I don't either. And I, I again, I think it's so interesting to see decor as like a reflection of the society that we're living in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I really started seeing a lot of that during the height of kind of like people being vegan and like, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of more like earth conscious movement. I feel like it's coming maybe a lot from that is that yeah. there's a lot more kind of uh, zen folk and but yeah it, it's a very odd thing <laughs> and i've seen some strange iterations like you know the sculptures like there's always like yoga witch yeah, yoga like sure. that whatever but like this year it's been like on blankets on art prints yeah, pillows. on pillows on i mean i saw like a like a, a mug that had yoga skeletons printed around it and it's like what is what is going on <laughs> Who's buying this? Yeah. See, when when you say who's buying this, um, my first thought is gnomes. What the fuck 
is up with gnomes. Like when they started, when there started being Christmas gnomes, I was like, this doesn't really make sense, but, but sure, like, like elves, elves, right? Santa has a beard. Okay, but then it was like, here are Valentine's gnomes. Here are Halloween gnomes. And I'm like, I don't, I, are these? I have tried, I've done like the, you know, wire crazy serial killer map trying to figure out where that started. And I cannot for the life of me figure out. The only thing I kind of was like, maybe is that it was like, when the movie Trolls got super popular, and I was like, maybe it's kind of this like troll gnome. I don't, or maybe it's the cottage core thing, like garden maybe, gnomes. Maybe like it's, it's like Scandinavian. Like and there like there's a lot of that. Yeah. Just like these last, I noticed uh, at home last year had a whole like Scandinavian Christmas line. Mm-hmm. It was all light wood and pure yeah. Blue it's and... the um. I'm gonna say this wrong. The Huga. Hey, hey, Huga. Yeah. Hey, Huga. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of vibe, I guess, is maybe where it's from. Yeah. But I just find them extremely odd. They're, to me, a bit unsettling. Yeah. I did I did see one in one of my latest decor hauls uh, where I, I did actually like it. It was, I was like, this is going to seep into another trend. A lot of pastel Halloween yes. happening. I think Michael started the charge last year, but yeah. I've seen a lot of stuff at TJ Maxx and Home Goods this year. And I'm... I'm cautiously excited about it. Like, yeah, I think it can be done poorly, but you know, for us kitschy queens who are a little more spooky but colorful, mm-hmm. I've been really, I've liked to, I like to have options. Yeah, exactly. I do. I have um, kind of a collection of like pink and lilac pumpkins. Mm-hmm. So I do usually do like one air, like one kind of tableau. Yeah. It's more of a like pastel pink Halloween. Well, kind we're of we're in Penny's apartment here filming. Like yes. it's there's lots of beautiful pastels happening. It's uh, definitely I could see where you would yeah be kind able of to use bring it. those together. Yeah, and then it's fun like because you can use it when it's not Halloween. You know, it's yeah. not like you have orange and black. I did see a line from, we don't have these where I'm from, uh, the, the Christmas tree shop. Yes, we don't have those either. I think I'm it's so a jealous. Thing maybe because I've seen people in like Texas posting yeah. about it, but um, they put out like a whole pastel. There were like pastel tombstones and all kinds of interesting stuff that I thought was kind of, and I, I specifically, they had a lot of that um, mint seafoam color, yes. which I never see. They do the that pastel nice. pinks and the turquoises, but I almost never see that mint color. Yeah. And that's my like, poison of choices is kind of turquoise and mint yeah see I really like that because that's kind of my when I saw that Michaels was doing like a spooky pastel line I was very excited but it's very romance centric I agree which just doesn't speak really, to me it doesn't speak to me and it doesn't really fit for Halloween necessarily like I get I having a couple pieces that are like the you know till death and whatever I think a lot but, of people were using it for weddings and stuff which is Cool. I'm glad yeah. that the option is there, but like it's to put it out at Halloween time is kind of odd because yeah. it's not really a Halloween thing. Like it, it's skeletons and romance, which is cool. Again, neat, but I mean, love skeletons can be in love too. So <laughs> I, I support it. All kinds of lover I support it. The pod. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I agree that it wasn't because there was a lot of pre-hype about that line last yeah. year before it came out. And then when it actually did, I didn't really have a lot of interest. Yeah, in I was, I was really excited. And like when people were first posting like the full aisle photos from like a little ways right. back and I was like, Ooh, I love this. <laughs> Yay. And then when I actually like saw it in store, I was like, mm, mm, mm. I got like, I think that um, the skeleton, the x-ray frame set was technically part of that line. Yeah. And so I like that where it's like, you know, kind of a glamorous, like matte black kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that's one of the things that I, I feel like is most missing from a lot of Halloween decor is kind of that gothic glamour yeah. vibe. Like a lot of and things. And even when they do yeah. it, it's not quite what I want. Yeah. Yeah. They'll always like add something to it where I'm like, why is there a skeleton hand on this? Like, it was fine. It was fine how it was. That's how I feel. Um, there's that. There's a platter at Home Goods this year, and the top is like this gorgeous cobweb pattern. And then the base is, is a that ugly shitty skull. little skeleton c- ceramic skeleton thing. And I'm like, I don't want this. Just yes. give it a nice black pedestal base, and I'd be all over I it. I literally had the exact same commentary about that thing. I, it made me, because I, I want 
Give me more spider web decor, please. Yeah, spider webs. Michael's at home. Call Penny and I, and we will design a whole line for you, and it will be so good. It will be so good. It will be so glamorous. And That's my, probably my dream, would be to get to a point where someone would want me to design a line for them. That would be so cool. I don't know why they would. No one's going to call me. Have your people call my people. Yeah. I'll design you a line. They're gonna they're gonna call us like how they have Lil Nas X at Taco Bell being like, I'm the engagement officer, and they'll be like, Midge and Penny are chief engagement officers. Chief spookies of our Halloween decor line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh I I I I'm interested to see though, because I am seeing more of that pastel elsewhere. Because I think if and actually uh, Mike from All Hallows Geek mentioned this, I think if that trend goes well, we might start seeing even more of it in the next couple of years. And that would make me really excited to see more kitschy, glam, spooky agreed options. You know what trend I need to talk about? Mm. Have you seen this like seaside yes. Halloween? The mermaid uh, holding, mer- witch mermaid holding a pumpkin and like a sand dollar pumpkin. Again, what <laughs> I like, I feel like I, I know, know that they're giving us options. It's we true. love to see variety. I, I know that like coastal chic is a big thing, sure. and people who do have those like like a beach house or whatever like like to do a year round thing. But it but seems it's, weird that it shows up. Yeah, yeah, like who I can't think of anyone in Milwaukee who's like, oh hell yeah, sand dollar pumpkin. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, find me a Midwestern mom who doesn't have a, a coastal themed bathroom. <laughs> and that's who I think that's being marketed to this is true. every Midwest, like single family mother, like dreams with, of the beach. Yeah. Who just wants a vacation from her 12 children. <laughs> that's her beach bathroom where she takes one bath a week. And that's the only time she gets to herself. <laughs> she, she needs that sand dollar pumpkin. I saw like a, like a surfer skeleton. Also, with yeah, with the board as part of that line. Yeah, I I agree. Like, it's interesting to... Ha- it's good to have different options. Yeah. And, and I'm never going to, like, shit on anybody for no, liking yeah. what they like. That's fine. But it just... I think it always catches me off guard because at this point, I'm like, I'm not even getting the general Halloween decor that I would like yeah. to see. And you're giving me Halloween hoedown? I didn't ask for this. Yes. I just wanted a really quality jack-o'-lantern was all I wanted. <laughs> and you gave me a farmer as yep. a skeleton. Why? With a fish, with a dead fish. Why is this happening? Can I share one of my weird Halloween decor peeves? Tell me. Bad kerning on text on Halloween. So for those who Tell don't what know, kerning is. kerning is the graphic design term for the spacing between letters. Oh, okay. It's one of those things too, I think for me, where it's like, that had to probably go through multiple levels right. of yeah. approval. <laughs> so why did nobody catch it? It is. And it's just, it's just, it's lazy design. And it makes me really frustrated because I'm like, I know some people are like, oh, well, it's just a Halloween decor, but it's like. If I'm spending my money on this, I want it to look nice. This is life. Don't ever demean. Don't say this is just Halloween decor to me. (laughs) Right. That's a personal attack on me. And I will take it as such. Yeah. Uh, I have not. Now I'm going to. What's happened though now is that you've shattered that glass for me. And I'm, I'm going to see it all the time now. And I, I was living blissfully unaware before and now penny has ruined yep next time everyone out there next time you go halloween shopping take a look at that text and be like hmm does this does this look appropriately spaced or is it weird or is it weird i guess what i would like to because we're getting close to wrap up time tell me give me give me two things here and i will give you my same two things um your hidden gem like your favorite hidden gem place to go to go hunt and then your favorite piece of decor that you own Ooh, those are tough questions um i mean i feel like the best hidden gem will always be if you can find something vintage um gosh darn yeah it's it's very it's very difficult to find vintage halloween it's very sought after but occasionally you can hit the right antique store and you'll find something that just like blows your mind. You love it. 
you gotta have it. Yeah. So I always like that. Otherwise, um, I shop a lot of the normal places. Um, obviously, you know, always looking at those like home goods and things. But I mean, I think like we were talking about before, the other great hidden secret is always um, a small maker. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, gosh, please uh, go look through either of our Instagrams and look at like the, the companies that we tag. We always tag any kind of yeah. like small maker that we, I mean, even like this beret I'm wearing is from Em and Sprout and Penny's got on small maker jewelry from Rub's Rainbow House and looks like Luxlight, maybe? Yes. Um, like we always tag them in our in our posts. So give that photo a tap and see who who we shop with because we, we shop with a lot of awesome small companies. Um, did you say your favorite piece of decor? I did not. Okay. Um, I feel like, so one of my, my favorite recent acquisitions um, was last year I did get the Beetlejuice marquee sign yeah, buddy. Uh, from Spirit Halloween. And I was very excited about that. So that was definitely one that was like on my must list. Same. We, last we both year. got that. That was yes. a, a real achievement. That, they didn't make very many of them last year. Now you can just like walk into any spirit and find one. <laughs> I, feel, I feel, I'm glad though. I'm glad I got the thrill of the hunt on that one because it was just such a high when I found it yes. and I walked in and they literally just put one out and it was the only one in the store. And the girl was like, I literally just put that on the floor. And I was like, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> and I think my other favorite um, would have to be, I have a gorgeous wreath um, made by white Christmas wreaths. That Ooh. is a vintage ornament wreath. I love and ornament wreaths. She is um, a Joanna Parker design partner, so it has um, a, like a Joanna Parker like um, wooden like oh, piece on it. Yeah, um, and I absolutely love that. And I pack it so carefully back in its bubble wrap every year to make sure that it's safe. Oh. Um, but I absolutely treasure it, and I actually won it. Oh, um, oh so that's right. I do remember. It was that. extra special. I do remember that. Do you do a Halloween tree? I don't remember. I sometimes do. Um, I did set up, I did a pink Halloween tree Ooh, uh, with my little pink guy, guy uh, which is fun. So I'll, I'll have to see. I might bring that back out again this year. That's another, I'm getting off course again. That's another trend I'm seeing a lot of this year is the Christmas Halloween crossover decor. Yes, lots of crossover. But so I'm going to say my hidden gem is probably... I mean, I, I talk about this. I do really love to go to the places like TJ Maxx where yeah. you, you don't know where, what you're going to totally. find. Um, but I also think there's a lot of stores that we forget about, like um, like Cracker Barrel or like, you know, places like that, that uh, go places that not everyone's looking for Halloween mm -hmm. because you will find a lot better stuff there <laughs> or more options. Um, and then my favorite piece is my Headless Horseman. Yeah. I got it on my birthday three, four years ago, and I went to Home Goods to look for that piece and found it, and it was the most excited I think I've ever been about anything, and it's still my favorite piece that I own. <laughs> I'm a big Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. We'll have a we'll have a Sleepy Hollow episode coming your way Stay soon. Tuned. So <laughs> spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> well thank you all so much for tuning in today. Don't forget that you can follow us on uh, Instagram at Ghoul's Night in Pod. And if you'd like to follow me, you can find me at Midge Monster. And you can find me at Penny Snark. Well thanks again, y'all, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hundred and seventeen followers. Yes. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, spooky, 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 spooky. Beautiful, just like us. <laughs> so gorgeous. Oh, she got to plug her mic back in. Yeah, that would have been funny. I'm just recording the whole time, but not. I mean, it would not have been funny. Let's be clear. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it would be. It would be something. It would, it would be, be a thing that had happened.